Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Roxy and I make videos of stuff I create. In this video, I will be attempting my first furniture makeover. I found this chest of drawers in the alley and I decided to give it an upgrade rather than it be picked up with the trash. I started off with washing it down with soap and water and giving the chipped areas a sanding. If I was gonna sell this thing, I would sand it really well and fill in any cracks with wood filler, but it's my dresser, so yeah. This is my cat, Little. She helped me remove the knobs. I'm using chalk paint and I'm pouring it into a little Tupperware. I'm also using a really fine mist sprayer because this paint dries really quick and you need it to blend. I'm also using an assortment of paint brushes, a bucket of water, and a lint-free cloth. This is my first time using chalk paint and I'm noticing a very huge difference between this and regular acrylic paint. And I'm very happy to have watched a bunch of videos beforehand and learned this spray bottle technique. It helps tremendously with evening out the brush strokes. And here's what the piece looks like after the first coat. I realized I needed to move it downstairs, so I did the second coat off camera and left the sides unpainted. I left them unpainted on the bottom, but I accidentally forgot and painted the sides on the top. So I'm gonna have to go back through and paint them with primer. The reason I'm painting them with primer is because I'm gonna decoupage the sides with these napkins. I thought these napkins looked really cool, like a kaleidoscope when they are open. I lay the napkins out on the drawers where I plan to put them down and I'm doing the design every other drawer. The top three drawers get this particular design, but I'm gonna divide it into thirds so they fit. I'm using what's called the wet technique for decoupage where I use my spray bottle and I sprayed a piece of plastic and I'm cutting the napkin down to an approximate size. And I'm flipping it over so the image is face down. And I'm just slightly making sure that it is flat. I'm also adding a layer, a really thin layer of matte Mod Podge. I want it to be really thin. When I place this down, I'm making sure that it's lined up and I'm very gently pressing it down. I do grab a pastry um, scraper and it works for the small pieces, but I did that with the larger drawer sides and I got some tears in it. So, eh. so while it's still wet, I am going to put a top coat of the matte Mod Podge on there. And this is what it looks like when it's dried. Who knew napkins could look so damn good? Here is where I messed up and I cut out a piece of another napkin and just did another layer of decoupage on top. You can see here I did that as well. 
And unfortunately, because I had to fix these mistakes, I didn't have enough napkins to do the other side. So the other side's gonna have this design on it. Now that the decoupage is dry, I am going to take my scissors and kind of knock down the excess paper once it's dry. And I'm sanding at an angle. And I have a mask on because I think these drawers were painted prior to the 1970s and paint then had a lot of lead in it. So safety first, hello. And this is what it looks like. So please let me know in the description down below, not description, comment section down below, which side you like, the left side with the kaleidoscope images or the right side with the poppies. Here are the legs and knobs that I removed. If you're interested to see what I do with these, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button because I'm gonna do something with them, sculptural and not furniture. And these are the legs that I replaced them with. They're eight inch acrylic legs and I think they are beautiful. Now I'm gonna show you how I am installing the hardware. I am taking the plate and I am measuring, or not measuring, marking off where I'm gonna drill, move a little, thank you. And so I'm gonna drill some pilot holes. Pilot holes are a little bit smaller than the screw. That way the screw can go in pretty easy without splitting any of the wood. I decide to finish screwing these in with my screwdriver by hand because I know I won't strip the screws if I do it by hand, but if I did it with my screwdriver, there's a huge possibility I would strip these screws and these legs were expensive, so hence the handheld screwdriver. And here's what it looks like with two coats of paint, some brand new hardware, and check out these legs i'm so proud of those things and now for the fun part so these are a few silicone molds that i got off amazon and i am using some paper clay at this moment i'm doing something that i will tell you not to do I was lazy and I didn't go to the store and get cornstarch as my mold release and I used baby powder. Baby powder was a very bad idea. I should have just gone to the store. But I'm showing you so you don't do this yourself. It works okay for the smaller pieces that aren't too detailed, but these larger pieces like the one I'm working on now, the Baby powder just made it almost gooey and the scroll parts were all cut off. So please learn from my mistakes and use cornstarch. That made my life so much easier. I wish I would say it only took me this one mold to get off my bum and go to the store. But no, I spent the entire day with this cornstarch or the baby powder method and it took so much longer than it should have. Once I had a few clay pieces out of the mold to use as choices, I used some wood glue and some paint brushes to lightly put the wood glue on there and then press it in the space that I wanted. I only had a general idea of what I wanted to do and I basically made it up as I went. On this piece, I put way too much wood glue on and I can see the piece sliding down. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. I'm using silicone tools, I think they're makeup tools, to press the edges down and then a slightly damp brush. With the paper clay, that damp brush is gonna make the clay super sticky, which is awesome, because you wanna get those edges down really well because 
when the clay is drying, those edges might curl up and away from the piece. I use some painter's tape to keep this piece on so it wouldn't slide down due to the amount of wood glue I have on there. But I didn't have to do this to many other pieces. Right now I'm gonna show you how much wood glue to put on. I think this is referred to as a skim coat, a very light coat that I'm bringing all the way to the edges because they will pull up like I mentioned earlier. where I'm having to fix one of the swirls due to the baby powder method um, that just kind of broke off and I'm using water on some silicone tools and it fixed it perfectly so no harm no no foul um, I'm also just kind of putting things wherever I felt like it kind of holding pieces up deciding where I wanted it and then adding more glue And here's where I start getting super fancy and having some of the clay pieces pull away from the base. I guess it's a base. I don't know. But I wanted to give a 3D effect and I have some highlighter and a dotting tool to hold it while it dries. And this is what it looks like when I have all the pieces on there that I, I'm pretty happy with. It's looking a little bit like a cake. And I'm okay with that. Next, I'm going to start painting the paper clay pieces now that they're completely dry. At this moment, I'm realizing that, yeah, once again, this is nothing like regular acrylic and I need a lot more paint on my brush than I normally would. And I'm also now remembering that I should have added a little bit of water to the paint because when 
paint dries, it pulls in on itself. And so it left a lot of air pocket holes. And since the clay is white, you could see them from really far away. So I did end up having to go back several times to spot check and fill in any spots that had um, just pulled and I wanted it to all be solid. After that was dry, I decided to go through and put a clear coat of wax on there. I'm using a large um, wax applicator brush to go through each section, going up and down and side to side. And then I leave it for an hour and wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. I use the smaller brush in a swirly motion, I think that's the technical term, to get in all the nooks and crannies with the wax and then I went back through and wiped that down with the cloth as well. Once I removed all the excess wax, I did a layer of gilding wax on the right and I realized I didn't like just hitting the highlight spots. So I went back through a second round and did everything gold. So now I know in the future that I just like the solid gold look rather than it, it just being the highlighted parts. And here's what the piece looks like finished. I gotta say, it it looks much better than I expected for my first go, and so I'm, I'm proud. And I'm really proud of this section because it had a huge crack, and it just turned out great. And for those of you who have stuck around to the end of this video, I want to thank you very much. And if you're interested to see what I do with the original legs and knobs from the before picture, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I post those videos. And yeah, thank you very much and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.